Sure, my name's Maureen Walsh. Um, I worked for Alders way back starting September 1986. Um, I left college in the summer. Wasn't sure what to do. Um, I saw an advert in the Croydon Advertiser newspaper for um, part-time vacancies for Christmas staff in Alders. So I applied, went for an interview and I got the job. And I started in the September there as a Christmas temp and um, quite a few of us started there and I was put to work in the toy department. So I was coming up to 17 years of age. Um, we were all around the same age who started, not much, much older than that, 17 to 20. Um, so I'm still friends with, um, with some of the people today. Um, so yeah, I was put in the toy department. I loved it, I absolutely loved it. Um, there were, from recollection to start with, I, I distinctly remember two people that I started with, a Canadian young man, same age as me. We are still friends to this day and have met and gone to each other's country, etc. And another girl with the same, nearly the same surname as me. I'm Walsh, she was Welsh, her name was Natalie. Um, it was amazing, it was brilliant. Um, I remember being put, we were on the third floor, and I remember being put with this, the older ladies at the back, and there were toy prams and dolls and things like that. So I was with them, they were my mentors, they showed me how the tills worked, how to put out the stock, face forward the stock, br bring the old to the front, put the new, the back, etc. And yeah, just went from there. They, I remember one of them, I can't remember her name now, she was quite stern, quite an old school, near retirement age. She was quite a stern lady, but a lovely lady. And customers were priority. And that's what she taught me, customers were the priority. You look after your customers, you give them the best service. And that's what we've done, that's how we were taught. And gradually more people my age came into the... Into the um, toy department and we all got along so well it was amazing it was absolutely beautiful managers were brilliant supervisors I'd say were in their 20s they were management trainees in their 20s um, yeah amazing and as the as it got closer to Christmas obviously it got busier it was unbelievably busy but we loved it we loved every minute of it and we never missed a day it was amazing so, uh, serving the customers, um, I distinctly remember one product one Christmas called Teddy Ruxpin, which was very popular, and you'd put a cassette tape into him and he would talk and his mouth would move and his head would move, and there was all different stories that he could tell, and he was the main selling point. Um, not that we had to push anything, because we had Barbie, we had Ken, we had Action Man, everything, um, Sylvanian families, Every little toy you could think of, it was amazing. And the bigger toys as well, the ride-along cars that you can still buy today, as you can like Barbie, etc. Um, we just learnt on the job. And it was easy, if you enjoy what you do, it's easy. It was, it was so lovely. The people to work with were lovely. The customers were lovely. They were children. You had children coming in with their parents. Look at this, look at that. We want this, we want that. And the parents, it was fine because it was coming up to Christmas. There was, I don't recall any raised voice, any animosity. I don't recall any of us even going to have a sick day. It was just brilliant, very well looked after. And if we worked all day on a Thursday in the evening, if we were working until 9 p.m., you were given a free meal, a free hot meal in the canteen, which was beautiful, beautiful food lovely people that worked up there really uh, you were just looked after you couldn't fault the staff you couldn't fault management at all we all all of us as staff because we're all around the same age yeah we used to laugh and joke around and have a bit of fun and yeah you would laugh and joke with the customer and say, this this toy does this and this toy does that and demonstrations i recall we had um like a, oh, what would you call it now, a concession that would come in and this chap, his name was Ian, he was a much older man and he would try and sell the remote control cars 
So what we found out is that every remote control controlled his car. So of course, being a bit cheeky, we got hold of a remote control and we would control it for him and run it around the store and he'd be chasing it. He's like, what's going on with my remote control? And we, we, we had control of it. <laughs> but he was great fun. He, 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 um, he, he never got angry or anything like that. Customers never got mad. We'd stop the car in front of someone and they'd be like, ooh. Um, no, it was, it was great. It was good fun. I must add, when we first, when we started, although we were temporary staff, we were all given an Alders discount of 15% straight away, even though we were temporary staff, anywhere in the store. So um, as Christmas came along, we were invited to the staff party, which normally temps were not allowed to go to, just full-time staff. So it was a staff Christmas party. And then towards the end of our contracts, um, we, well, we were all asked to stay on full-time. And some of us went to different departments and um, quite a few of us stayed in the toy department. So I stayed on full time um, with Tim from Canada, Tim Houston. And we, after the Christmas, we were, and Sarah, my friend Sarah Wilmot, she, um, we're still friends today. We, um, we all stayed on. And then you had the winter sales, the china and glass came up to be sold up there and all the other winter sales happened. And then as they gradually died down, of course you had spring coming. So half the toy department was given over to garden furniture. So we had the front part of the toy department was garden furniture and the rest were toys. So you can imagine during the year, toy department's very quiet. Garden furniture getting busy, etc. So as it was so quiet and as the months went on, um, I decided to go back to college, which I did the following September. But Alders kept me on as uh, working Thursday nights and Saturdays and um, same kind of scenario for Sarah as well I can't remember what she actually done um, Tim stayed there um, as his family were over from Canada for one year the, his parents were teachers so they'd done an exchange so his family his parents worked in Riddlesdown school in Croydon and the the house exchange where they were those teachers worked in their school in Montreal, in Canada. So Tim stayed there full time. Um, but uh, yep, so they kept me on as Saturday staff. And um, we worked, uh, the grotto was there at Christmas. You had um, all the, like Santa Claus, etc. Other staff started. Um, yeah, great fun. Really just lovely. We worked. We, there was no, oh, can you work over there today? Can you do that today? No, yeah, we do it. No trouble. No problem whatsoever. Um, when I first started, it was the old uniform, which was brown. So it was a brown skirt and I think a beige blouse with a big bow you had to tie. Um, I think some ladies had waistcoats. And then there was a revamp and the, the theme was blue, which was lovely. And I've still got a carrier bag from Alders, and um, it had Christmas decorations in actually, which I found a couple of years ago. And our WhatsApp group is actually the carrier bag of Alders, the picture on it. Um, so then the uniform changed and it was navy blue skirt and white shirt with tiny polka dots, blue polka dots on it. But we never had a, a, different, a different uniform. Um, if you worked in the grotto, you might have to dress up as an elf or Mickey Mouse ears or something like that for a bit of fun for the children, um, but, but no different uniform, no. And if there was a promotion which um, to, to promote all different sorts of toys, myself and Sarah done. So Sarah, one Saturday, she dressed up as a Sylvanian family rabbit and I dressed up as Postman Pat. And it was so tall, I had to look out of his nose, I think it was. He was that tall, so it was great fun. <laughs> When to when did you work in Alders? So I started September 86 and they kept me on for a whole year full time. Then I went to college and I was Saturday. And then when I finished college, I was a full time secretary, still kept my Saturday job at Alders. And I, 1989, April 89, I left to go uh, to America backpacking. 
and I came back September and I went straight up to my manager in Alder's office in the department store, in the toy department. I'm back. She took me straight up to personnel and I, st I got my job back and started back there again um, Thursday nights and Saturdays the following week. So it was that easy. It was that brilliant. So I, till when did you work there? I left there in March 1990. Yeah. Why did you leave? Um, I went backpacking again around the world. I went to um, Honolulu, Fiji, Australia, Hong Kong, Thailand. And when I came back, I had got a full-time job as a bus driver and I'd done shift work. So no more orders, unfortunately. So, yeah. What this company, all this meant to you for your later working life? Oh, the morals, um, the fun, the camaraderie, great managers, great managers. You don't get the same, you don't find the same. Um, friends that I made back then, Oh, back in 1989. Wow, it's a long time ago. <laughs> We're still friends. And another friend of ours, so my friend Sarah, her best friend Sharon, she worked in housewares. They started, so Sarah's a bit younger than me. She started when she was 16, so maybe a year later. So myself, Sarah, Sharon, we're still friends. And then we made friends with a security guard. It was his second job in Alders as well. He used to fix, or he used to deliver actually, um, photocopiers. So it was his second job as a security guard in Alders. The, we're still friends, the four of us on a group, still friends. And um, my friend Tim in Canada, he doesn't remember them. He doesn't remember um, Sarah, but Sarah remembers him. Um, yeah, great friendships, loyalty, fun. You were treated so well. We, I mean, really, back then, all those years ago, unlike 17, 18 year olds, some of them of today, we were just children, youngsters. We didn't, we were green as far as the world was concerned. We didn't have mobile phones and internet, etc. Um, so yeah, life was brilliant. And um, yeah, it gave you morals, it gave you substance to, to, in your working life, to form friendships and to form the morals of, of a working life and to get respect from your managers and give respect as well. It was amazing. It was beautiful. And um, also Alders had an amazing um, uh, club upstairs. And um, you could, it was open on a Friday night, definitely a Friday night, Saturday I remember. I think Thursday nights as well. Might have been open every night, but I can't remember. Definitely Thursday nights, Fridays. They used to have brilliant entertainment, absolutely amazing. And if I'm not mistaken, I always remember this, I could be completely mistaken. One night they had three comedians starting out and the first one came on, he wasn't very good. Oh no, you know, it was like, oh dear. The second one came on say, oh crikey, oh, no, he's not very funny. The third one came on and he was hilarious. He was brilliant and I am sure I can't be 100% sure, but I am pretty sure it was Eddie Izzard. I'm pretty sure it was him starting out. I could be completely wrong, but that's what I remember. And he was brilliant. He was so funny. And the, the chap who ran the social club, Terry was his name. I can't remember his last name. His name was Terry. Big fella. Very nice chap. And it was just amazing. It was, it was oh, just a place that... Looking back now, we took for granted, but it was the best time of your life. You yeah. mentioned uh, good management. Yeah. And why was it? Because they were good fun. They, <laughs> myself and Sarah, we used to muck about a little bit. So they would put us on separate tills, but we said, oh, please let us go on the same lunch break. Please, we'd be like, please. And they'd say, yes, all right then, but you have to work on separate tills and like, Okay then, but we would meet up in the in the department during the day, you know, and muck around as as it were, with our other friends Darren and Turgot and everybody else. Always got our work done. But management were brilliant. They I don't know. I I can't put my finger on it. They were just for us, for the worker, 
not that we would protest, we need more money or anything like that, because it wasn't like that at all. And I remember one winter, one Christmas, not too bad a winter, but it was coming up to Christmas and um, we all wanted to get together before work and we all brought some food in and we all went to what was Queen's Gardens across the road before it was uh, like it is now, when it was the old Queen's Gardens, and we all had breakfast there before we started work. We started at 9 a.m. And what time did you finish? Six. The store closed at six o'clock. Did it open every single day of the week? No. It wasn't open on a Sunday. So on a Sunday there was stock take and um, I don't even know if we were asked or we volunteered. Yeah, we're coming for stock take. Double money. And we came in and we counted every action man and we counted every marble and every single little bit of clothing that could be for a dolly, everything. And we loved it. And again, the management, they went out, they brought us McDonald's and yeah, it was great. We had great fun. It was, it was one of those things. And Thursday was always late night. Tuesday we opened at half past nine because we had staff training or staff meeting from nine to 9.30 the whole, every department, and the shop opened at half past nine. It was so lovely, and there wasn't, the can, I mean, the canteen was the social club, so it was huge, you can imagine how big it was. The canteen staff were brilliant, the food was amazing, fresh, and as I say, if you worked all day on a late night, you were given a little token, you'd get a free meal. And I remember one winter, the winter was so bad, was it the winter of 86? It might have been, I can't remember, 86 or 88. The winter was horrific, so bad with snow. So we all walked in, you couldn't get a bus. I walked from Addiscombe, we had our Wellingtons on up to here and we walked into work and we, we made it in to work because we enjoyed it so much. And they gave us, they fed us. This is your reward for coming in hot meals and it was amazing you had a half hour morning break nowadays some firms if you're lucky you get half hour lunch break we had a half hour morning break hour lunch break half hour afternoon break and um, it very reasonable subsidized canteen but yeah and that's that that winter yeah we had um free meals it was very quiet it was like, there's snow, quickly put the sleigh display up. So we had all these old-fashioned wooden sleighs, beautiful wooden sleighs. Myself and Tim made a display. and I think we sold, we sold them all, actually, by the weekend. We got our, our wages, which I can't remember what they were now. I can't remember, I can't recall. But um, it, was, it was good, it was nice. And then every Saturday after work, there'd be a handful of us and we'd all go home, scatter to the winds, go home, get changed and all meet in the Blacksmith's Pub in South Croydon and have a good few drinks every Saturday, practically, yeah. And if we didn't do that, there was... I, I started driving, I had a little car, then Richard, he got a car and Darren got a car. Sarah didn't drive because she was the young, one of the younger ones and I don't think Sharon drove. So. One of us would drive and we'd all pile in the car and we'd go down to Brighton for the night and then we'd come back and yeah, we were, we were all good friends, all good friends, really good. Can you describe the atmosphere a bit when you left the building, the whole inner city, Brighton area? How did it look like at the time? Oh, it was lovely. Um, back then you could, uh, there was buses and cars on the high street. Um, the Alders window displays were to die for. They were so beautiful. Or always, always beautiful. The Christmas displays, um, amazing. The atmosphere was great. And there was no rivalry between Debenhams across the road and Alders over here. And there was no rivalry and Argos and all the rest of it. But what used to make us laugh, myself and Sarah, and sometimes Sharon, we'd go out at lunchtime in the summer, just in our uniform, just our blouses and our skirts out, we'd go and we'd be in Woolworths or Sainsbury, or not Sainsbury, sorry, um, Argos or something. Excuse me, so and so, so, we don't work here, we work in Alders. And it's, yeah, it was all nice like that. We, we didn't think we were above anybody else, but it was, yeah, it was a lovely place to work for. It was, it was comparable. It was like the uh, Harrods of Croydon, if you like. 
that's what we felt. It was a beautiful place, historic. And um, I mean, I could tell you a story about an old lady that worked there, went to work there at the turn of the century. Um, my mum, it was my mum's friend's mum. And when she was 14, she, she got a job working for the granddaughter of one of the um, Alders family. The grand, worked for the grandmother of one of the Alders family. She was 14 years old and she, worked, she was employed to work in the house within the Alders building itself to set the fires in the morning, etc. and look after the, the um, grandmother. And um, the grandmother was impressed and liked her, etc. And she said, well, why don't you go home and fetch all of your belongings and bring them and live here? She had to live in. She said, this is all I have, everything that she was wearing. This is all I have. These are my possessions. So they fitted her out with some new clothes, everything, down to her underwear, everything. And everywhere that the girls went who worked in the house, they were chaperoned everywhere. And even when she, would, she wanted to get married, she had to ask permission from the grandmother, from the Alders clan, if you like. And yet they agreed and let her marry. And yeah. And of course, when you got married back then, you had to leave and that. But um, yeah, Alders were very good to that lady. And her, her daughter, my mum's friend, she'll never forget that. She said, there's still the front door for the apartments, for the house, still there at Alders. And mum would probably be able to show me if she came into Croydon now. But I, I'm not sure where it is. But yeah, um, amazing, amazing family orientated store. Looked after you well. I remember I had, I had one day off in the whole time that I ever worked there. One Thursday night I took off because I had um, a tooth removed and I had anaesthetic and I couldn't go in. So like, where's Maureen? Where's Maureen? And uh, my mum had to phone up. Oh no, it was terrible. <laughs> She's not at work. <laughs> that was the only time I ever had off, ever. I don't, I don't recall anybody having time off. It was just an amazing place. Yeah, very good. You told us about the building. Can you, can you explain how the different departments were lined up when you, when you entered the building? Yeah, so we'd come in the Dingwall Road entrance was, was the staff entrance and you had security. Then we'd go up in the lift. Um, you had mezzanine floor. There was cards and stationery, I recall, there. On the ground floor, there was all perfumery and, and um, makeup, etc. Out in the mall, there was bread shop, Coughlin's. You'd have some concession stands. You'd have the carpet department. Obviously, you couldn't have carpets upstairs. Way too heavy getting all those upstairs and you'd have menswear down there. Um, of course, toy department was on the third floor, which was really convenient for mums with prams. That's why they, I don't know why they put that up there. Um, you also had other concessions like, was it Dash? Other sports departments. And then they built a fourth floor. And I remember when the fourth floor was built and that had TVs and stereos. And I remember the store closed on a Saturday and a Thursday night, and then at the back of the shop, back of the toy department, they would bring in the massive forklifts and cranes straight through the toy department and get it all ready to fit the escalator going up into the fourth floor. And um, yeah, all these escalators down, and yeah, the, the departments, the, I just, Mum had another friend who worked in China and Glass. She worked her whole life there. She retired many years ago. She's, she's still alive. Um, yeah, people, when people work there, they work there for years, for years. And I still see, when it closed, the, the, in the bakery, there was a lady that worked there and her husband was a porter. And I still see them. She still works for Coughlin's Bakery. I haven't seen her for a little while now, but her and her husband, yeah, worked for Alders forever, forever. How did you feel when you find out the building was about to close? Um, we couldn't believe it because there was an Alders in Sutton and there was an Alders in... Oh, what was the other one? Uh, gosh, I can't remember now. 
I, I was in it anyway. They were smaller ones. We couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. Very saddened that it was going to close. Yeah, very sad. Because there's so many nooks and crannies in the building. I don't know if you've been in the building. I don't know if you've been allowed. No, it's a shame. There's so many nooks and crannies and haunted places, they believe, as well. And narrow hallways and things like that. So, um, yeah, some beautiful architecture in there. Beautiful staircases. An amazing, amazing shop. Yeah, very sad. My wish would probably be the wish of everyone that ever worked there. Reopen it. Keep it so beautiful as it was. The beautiful departments. Oh, it was just amazing. Just reopen it and keep it. Yeah. Quite amazing. Yeah, that would be. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, if, if companies would listen to the workforce on the ground, listen to, listen to the workers' hearts. Mm -hmm. If you really enjoy your job, you'll be passionate about it and you want it to succeed. You want, whatever you do, you want to succeed in it. That's because you have a passion. Um, yes, of course, people have to make money these days, but managers need to have a heart organizations need to listen to the people that work there for example i love watching um the factory programs people who work in them factories their uncles aunts sons daughters they're all brought to the factory they all work because they're looked after and trained they're listened to and they're given good benefits and they're treasured the, the, the workers are treasured and taught and their turnover, I'd say, in the factory environments, like um, the biscuit factories, etc., all of those, I'd say the turnover is low. I've worked for companies, turnover is like that. And I've literally just left a company that's like that because it's getting worse. Because they don't listen. They don't care about people's health or anything. Alders... I was not feeling 100% one Saturday. And they're like, no, straight up, up to see the nurse. They had a nurse. Up to see the nurse. They made me lie down <laughs> for an hour or two. I'm like, oh, I want to go back down now. I'm fine. It's just like, no, wait there. But they cared. They, lit they actually cared. It was amazing. Beautiful place. 